T.S. Eliot. No, but what's the list called? Literary Guidebook, Literary Calendar, and Map to Cambridge in the 20th Century. Of all their birthdays. Uh, T.S. Eliot apparently lived at 52 Mount Auburn Street and also at 22 Russell Hall, Holyoke. Robert Frost also lived in Cambridge and was connected with Harvard, as well as E.E. E. Cummings, Wallace Stevens, and Conrad Aiken. Robert Lowell, of course, taught at Harvard and also at BU and lived in Cambridge. John Berriman also was connected with Harvard and lived in Cambridge. Delmore Schwartz, John Ashbury, Elizabeth Bishop taught at Harvard and bought a condo on Lewis Ward, which she used to call me about helping her with, select where to go to buy old floorboards and other matters to do with renovating the loft she bought there on Lewis Ward. That's not what it says on the list. No. <clears throat> John Ashbury, he also was connected with Harvard and lived and in... And in the Signet Club. And was a member of the Signet Club. Alan Grossman... Signet Society, it's called. Graduated from Harvard, during which time it was well known that he lived with his psychiatrist. Bill Alfred, much adored by his students. Lived at 38 uh, lived, Athens Street. Lived at 38 Athens Street and there received many other writers and undergraduates. Uh, he was most welcoming to all. Frank Bedart. David poet. Ferry. David Ferry. At 8, Ellery, at 8 Ellery Street. David Ferry lived at 8 Ellery Street with his wife, Anne. And he was a PhD student at Harvard. He also got his PhD at Harvard. Lloyd Schwartz, we knew him. He was much involved in the whole literary scene. Robert Pinsky. Cambridge. Robert who? Pinsky. Pinsky. Robert lives Pinsky. Lives on Highland who, Avenue. Lived on Highland he Avenue. Lives, no, all right, he lives, well, still lives there. Don't he give his address there. out if he's still living there. Became poet laureate of the United States. Gail Mazur, married to a painter. Yeah, a very good painter. What was his name? Mazur, last name. Last name of Mazur. Some of his paintings are in the collection at the Museum of Fine Arts. Norman Mailer was a, an, a student, an undergraduate at Harvard. And Anne Beattie <coughs> lived in Cambridge and... She lived in Somerville on Cherry Street. Actually, she lived in Somerville on Cherry Street. Okay, um, but, she taught but let, let's not give like actual numbers of streets anymore. All right. let, we can, you can tell what street it was on what town, but let's stay away from numbers. Okay. Who's next? Alan Williamson, who, wasn't he married to... Uh, Ann Winters. Ann Winters, but then they got divorced, did they? She went to teach at ben Bennington College and uh, was involved with Canto uh, and a much valued friend of your father and myself. You have down here John Carey. Well, Carey, Casey. Casey, yes, he was a, a, a undergraduate. Uh, what did he do? Well, he's a, a well-known novelist. That's what I thought, but <coughs> I've never read anything. <coughs> William Melvin Kelly, <coughs> a poet. No, he's a novelist. Novelist? Oh, he yes. wrote Them, Them, and uh, a novel about uh, black people who just left. Gene Stafford. What, people who, black people who... who, who just start 
off went to Liberia or? or something. No, not to Liberia, but they just they just they just uh, went someplace else. I don't know where it was. He, he was in a, a course with uh, Rosanna Alfaro and, and uh, perhaps you uh, might Kalbar. take over reading these this list. And no, this is fine. I can't. I don't know if I can read it. No, you read the list. Listen, listen, Pat. You read the list, and both of you comment on the names. If you don't know the name, and it's only David, and if you want to comment, you comment. But it's for both. All right, Jean Stafford. I met. I had a dinner with her at Kirkland House. And um, when? In about nineteen fifty nine. Fifty eight. She was married to Robert Lowell. So what, were you a sophomore or a freshman? Probably a sophomore. And she wrote Boston Adventure, a terrific novel, and also another one called the... What's her name again? Jean Stafford. Jean Stafford called the... Uh, um, well, she wrote another novel, a brilliant novel. Um, <clears throat> called the, uh, something, Wild One or something like that, I forget the name, it's a beautiful novel. She's a wonderful short story writer. Elizabeth Hardwick was, is a well-known essayist and, and novelist and was married to Robert Lowell prior to the divorce. And actually, Robert Lowell was on his way back to her when he died of a heart attack in a taxi in Manhattan. I had quite a bit to do with her. She encouraged me to uh, arrange the funeral and the memorial service for Philip Robb, which I did, and with con constant consultations with Elizabeth over the phone. Carolyn Blackwood was married to Lowell after Elizabeth Hardwick, by whom Lowell had two children, adorable children, uh, beautiful. Monroe Engel was a teacher of your father's and a well-known. He lived on Story Street. Lived on Story Street until he sold the house and moved on. Thomas Wolfe, everybody knows Thomas Wolfe. No, no, not anymore. You can talk about Tom. If, if, if you don't he want wrote, to talk he about wrote, him. He wrote Look Homeward Angel. And also, um, Time and something, what is it? Time and the River? Yeah. He was very heavily edited, as I recall. By Maxwell Perkins. By Maxwell Perkins. Why? He wrote tremendously long novels. And he had, he needed help. With his organization. So, so who was the editor? Maxwell. Perkins. Maxwell Perkins. So he Maxwell was his developmental editor, That's which right. which means you're basically. Well, which means that he made the made the books of Thomas Wolfe work. That's what it by, means. I mean, usually cutting them down and so you know. Who but was, worked on the order? Who was the structure? Who was the person who uh, basically saved? T.S. Eliot's Four Quartets. Top Pound, Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound basically... Re well, he edited. He, he edited. He shortened... He the, more than edited. The, the Wasteland. I, yeah. He made oh, sorry, the Wasteland, yeah. It was the most brilliant, brilliant job of... of, of, of um, he saved it, though. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a little bit different than what most people think of editing today. So he basically rewrote a lot of it. Well, I don't think it's not he, just cutting, right? I don't think he got him to you know change phrases and and that sort of thing. I think it was there's actually cutting of it. There's okay. actually a very good um, volume showing the the two the two um, versions of the wayside, which really shows you the brilliance of of. Uh, Ezra Pound's choices. I mean, he was one of the great. Uh, I mean, his work on the Provençal poets and did a lot of translating. 
from um, people like Cabo Conte and and uh, I mean there used to be there are whole passages in in the the cantos of Ezra Pound his long poem. A lot of passages of, of Cavalcante, you know, translations of Cavalcante, most gorgeous things. Uh, you remember, I mean, just, just dazzling. And there's one, there's one poem in a German uh, edition of Pound with some translations of a poem I think it's called Dance Suite. It's absolutely rhythmically the most wonderful. I mean, it was fabulous. One of the great, great talents, sort of raw talents. The cantos are not a total success. One of the long, long poems in American literature that is not really a total success. Neither is Patterson, in my opinion, by William Carlos Williams. <clears throat> it's about the town of Patterson, New Jersey. Who else do I think? Well, did R.P. Blackner go to Harvard? No, he never went to. But he, he was. Never he, he, he never went to college. Well, because he's down here on the list, he must well, have taught well, Not everybody on the list went to Harvard. No, it's, no. He lived in Cambridge. First of all, all first of all, this list that I found in one of your folders a couple of days ago. Why did you make it? Because I is I, it is it? It's not I people who to, went to Harvard. It's people no. who lived in Cambridge, Cambridge or Cambridge at one point, or stayed in Cambridge for a short time, or, or either because they Cambridge. went to Harvard or because, because they, they had taught there. Yeah. Okay, that uh, makes sense. All right. I wanted to make. I wanted to publish both a calendar of their birthdays and and uh, this uh, street guide, like a walking tour guide. There is such a thing of, of, uh, of yeah, about like they, Paris. They recently redid a lot of signs in Dublin. Must have been 10, 15 years ago. Just for James Joyce. Yeah. Or, or Ulysses. Yeah. Well, R.P. Blackmore taught at Princeton for many years. And he was one of the, he was one of the greatest literary critics in America. Certainly one of the history. two or three top literary he critics never, in America. He never went to college. He only went to high school, I think, in Cambridge. I don't know which high school. Well, there was only one high school in Cambridge. Cambridge he, was at Mention Lab. He did not go to college. He, he was a full professor at Princeton University. And one of the greatest, I mean, his book on American literature, one of the greatest books of criticism. He has fantastic essays on Wall Stevens, T.S. Eliot, you know, and, and many other people. And the, he's a great critic. I mean, he has a, his writing style is absolutely superb. He, right. he never went to, to college. He had he's a full professor was a full professor at Princeton for numbers of years. Many years. Probably thirty or forty years. Philip Roth never went to college either. He got his education from the New York Public Library and also from the Communist Party in New York. He was given honorary degrees over the years. Absolutely. That doesn't really He was editor of Partisan Review. Oh he was a he start, did he, guy. He he was the editor of Partisan Review. Yeah, he was. With William Phillips. Then Sean Massini came. Is it what? Let's go. Is that the next person on the list? Yeah. Sh who is it? Seamus Sh 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 Heaney. Who oh, won the Nobel great, Prize? A great, a, a great yeah. Irish poet. He was the He was the. He died recently. Yes, he did. He he was the. Um, he he had the Oxford chair of poetry. Which was meant that he he, he was obliged to give a series of lectures on poetry. Um, which I think was published. A great friend of Peter O'Malley's. And a very close friend of Peter's. And I, I, I met him actually at the, the Plow on the Stars. I met Seamus at the Plow on the Stars. He was very gracious. When, friend. when did you meet him? I think about 19, uh, 1970. 
country day. Before, we, before we also I won, I won attended Nobel Prize. events that uh, for plowshares and also for Canto, uh, where we where he was present. I mean, the way we met Peter O'Malley, who founded Plowshares, and was one of the greatest composers in America, in my opinion, and also my father's opinion. We heard all, some of his major pieces, a lot of them played by the Philadelphia Orchestra, and also um, another piece played by the, the uh, St. Paul, Minnesota Chamber uh, Symphony. That he gave it up to go into the film business, a kind of midlife crisis, if you will. But Very the way we met Peter, dream of having something to do with starlets. Peter invited. No, no, don't put the list down. Peter and me. Well, afterwards, we're going to go to the next. Peter and I. Are you listening? Yeah. Peter invited Pat and me and maybe a couple of other members of the Cantor editorial board to... Uh, Who was on the board at that time? Jan Shriver, Carl Schloss, Diane Kent, Robert Kent. And David and myself. There were... Uh, Some editorial assistants. Who were the assistants? Ann Winters and Robert McCauley's wife, Ann Pater. Um who, alas, instead of distributing cantos, kept them under her bed. Good for her. Yeah. It's a treasure. She probably made a fortune on it. She. Maybe. Let's not talk ill of her. Who knows? Um, anyway, Peter invited us to... Uh, what's the... Uh, The restaurant in Cambridge that had the name of that a movie that uh, <coughs> Casablanca. He invited us to Casablanca. He gave a, a kind of party for us. Who did? Peter O'Malley invited Pat and me, and I don't think I don't. I don't think he anybody invited else. anybody else. He wasn't Just Pat invited. and me, because. We were the rival literary quarterly in Cambridge to Plowshares. He very graciously invited us to Casablanca, entertained us royally with orders and drinks. And, and uh, so that's how we got to know him. And then we went to uh, a couple of events. Numerous where events. we met his wife, Ellen Wilbur. Who was a very good short story writer. And David O'Darty, the painter who's died. Poet. Painter. He was a poet too, right? No. He was a painter. O'Darty. And he was famous for paying court to ladies. No, no, no. Don't talk ill of the dead. No, no. He had a wonderful way of about him. He would say, I want to fuck you from a great height. <laughs> that was his way. He was very funny. He really was. He was a very, writer. very funny. And his, his wife, uh, Gail, uh, what's her last name? It's Italian. An Irish name. Italian, Italian name. Italian, yeah. A very nice woman. She works for, she was a lawyer for, she was the legal uh, consultant for WGBH for a long time. Probably still is. <laughs> In any case, alas, we lost David O'Darty. He drowned. He le they left up in um, north of Boston, wh where the airport is, or where? No, not where the airport is, in Lynn. They no, no, not in Lynn. They, yeah, they did. They bought a beautiful house in Lynn. All right. On the water, overlooking Winthrop, the sea. I thought it was. No. Was it Lynn? That was later. They lived in an apartment in Lynn. I think he a charming guy. He drowned in a swimming accident. He was a terrific painter. He had huge mur murals down at one of the uh, the, 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 the bars, the, the pub downtown near where he used to work the Purple Shamrock. There was a big, a big another big Irish pub down there. 
He had a huge mural there. I mean, he's a very good painter. Anyway, he was a lot of fun. Wonderful man. And his sister... Um, oh, he had a terrible drinking. No. Uh, no. Let's not talk about that stuff. Let's go what back to the... What was his sister's name? Who was uh, Teresa Mitchell's... Uh, she was a nun. Bridget? She's a nun. Yeah. She was a teacher. Um, she taught my friend Teresa Mitchell. But let's go back to the list. She should be on the list, Teresa. She was a wonderful. Well, then She's talk about actress. Teresa. Teresa was Mitchell. a Well, put down the list and talk about Teresa. Teresa Mitchell. Yeah. Teresa Mitchell, who... Put down the list, Mom. Teresa Mitchell was really a very dear friend of mine. I met her on the bus when I was teaching at MIT. And we became fast friends, and she often didn't have any money at all because she wasn't a legal alien, but she did teach substitute teach at Cambridge Ridge in Latin and gave brilliant performances amongst them her own rendering of uh, wait, the wait, 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 don't mix it all together. You just went from teaching to performances and you made well, no she, distinction. Yeah. She wasn't giving performances while teaching. Yeah. She did Well she did, she, actually. Yes, yeah. but mom, come on, not let's make this time. not I, uncomprehensible. I have to say something about Teresa. She did, she did a, a fabulous, fabulous... We'll do her justice uh, and make it clear. This is a video. Performance of Penelope's uh, speech, in, uh, Molly Bloom's... Soliloquy. Soliloquy in the in Ulysses. In Ulysses. She, in an Irish pub in, in Brookline Village. But she I forget also, the name of the pub. She also... Did, she was in, did, in a bed... I know, I went to that performance. And she also, at Mass College of Art, with, with a, one or two other women, she did the uh, washerwoman washer scene from sequence. from sequence from Finnegan's Way. Which she using turned into the edge a, of the a stage act, as a big the act play. Edge, a bank of a river, of the Liffey River. It was the most brilliant production I've ever seen. She later, I think she... She actually oh, was she, in the Drury, Drury, the famous Drury Theater in Dublin. And she won before she numerous died fellowships cancer. before she died of cancer. Why don't you start over? Because I could not understand uh, your the way you were talking. Could you just be clear about what she did? So start over. She taught classes as a substitute teacher at Cambridge Ridge in Latin. And she also... Performed. <laughs> don't just say performed. So she was a theater actress in various productions? She, she performed in her own rendering of the Molly Bloom sequence from Ulysses in various pubs throughout the city. And then she uh, wrote and did an adaptation of the Washerwoman sequence as a play. Which, which is was performed from at the West Finnegan's College of Art from Finnegan's Joyce, Way. Okay. And uh, she was perfectly brilliant. It was a beautiful rendering with a few other actresses. Totally Does, and didn't she live with us for a time? Yeah, she, she lived with us. I used to put her in she one room or another floor. because, she you know, she didn't, have, she didn't have a place to stay at that time. So she occupied bedrooms or even slept in the cupola uh, uh, for some time. Because, of course, I wanted to help her out and she was look a after friend. her. Wasn't she attacked at some point while in Boston? There was a terrible incident which had occurred. In Los Angeles. But let's not go into that. Let's I don't want to go into nothing that. Nothing negative. But it's, I mean, and then she got cancer? And died. Well, she had gone back to Dublin because her brother was killed in a car crash in order to keep her mother company and console the family. And whilst there, she, she received a couple of fellowships and had numerous parts in, in the Drury Lane Theater and also performed on the continent. The fact is that while she was in America, life was very difficult for her because as an illegal alien, she had trouble making a living. 
and the only thing she could do was to substitute teach, and that paid at the time $25 a day, which wasn't much. Well, you taught in a, in a Catholic high school. It's another matter, how they didn't teach us a substitute. Cambridge in July is not a Catholic school. No. So what? What I did is irrelevant. Now, she was a great friend, and she was a wonderful, wonderful person. She was talented. Just talented. What's her name? Fun. Full name and again? Beautiful. Teresa too. Mitchell. Beautiful too. She had wonderful red hair and beautiful complexion. I remember that play that she was in. In the, it took place in mostly in a bed. That's right. That was Penelope Silver. You went to that. You must have been very young. I didn't usually leave them alone. We just took you along. All right, let's go back to the list. What? Who? What's the next name? I'm getting tired of this. Oh, it's let's then go quick. <laughs>